Welcome to Trust Talks with BBB Serving CT. I'm Kristen Johnson. In business, Trust Talks and Better Business Bureau's mission is to enhance marketplace trust. In each episode of our program, we hope to give you a better idea of what to look for, what to look out for, and what to expect so you can spend your money wisely and avoid being scammed. It is Cybersecurity Awareness Month. 68% of scams reported to BBB Scam Tracker last year originated on the internet and were more likely to lead to a monetary loss than any scam that was perpetrated in person or over the phone. And while it may seem like there's nothing we can do to stop a cyber attack, there are some best practices that consumers and businesses can follow to help guard against losing personal information to cyber thieves. Richard Holton is the owner of Enterprise Computer LLC in Clinton. Those statistics I just shared probably don't surprise you very much. No, nope, not at all. Why not? Um, we see that we see it every day. We have customers that contact us regarding um, all the scams that you can imagine, whether they got a fax that says they some prince left them money or some family member in a foreign land discovered that they're the only dependent of millions of dollars, or whether we get customers that say the IRS or a government agency is trying to collect money from them, or whether they just simply go to a website they didn't mean to go to, they end up on a website that starts blaring in their computer speakers that they've done something wrong and they need to contact either the federal or uh, state authorities, or they need to contact somebody at Microsoft who will help them get the uh, hack or get the virus off their computer. You've heard it all. Well, we're going to split this interview in half. First, we'll talk about what we can do to keep ourselves safe and keep our personal information protected. And then Rich is actually going to give us some advice on what businesses need to do to be more cyber secure. But first, tell me a little bit about your business, Enterprise Computer LLC. Um, we've been in, in Clinton uh, for about 27 years now. I used to be a manager uh, for Friendly's. I ran a couple million dollar restaurants. I was always a geek. I actually brought my first computer into Friendly's and started doing inventory, things like that on the computer. When I decided to leave Friendly's and go out on my own, it was really at the start of personal computers really becoming a thing in people's houses. So it was kind of good to grow up in that, in that era. Back then, we didn't worry about cyber threats or anything like that. I can't say didn't worry entirely. Mm -hmm. You know, Norton um, was one of the first antiviruses out there. McAfee was one of the first antiviruses out there. But it wasn't something that, you know, you worried about all these things that we worry about today. High speed internet wasn't a thing either. You know, people were using modems and it was at the start of DSL. A lot has changed very quickly, hasn't it? It's crazy. I always used to think that my business would be um, not a thing because technology would just advance and become so good it would just fix itself and um, no. <laughs> you have good job security thanks to those cyber criminals. So you said you had a lot of customers coming in complaining about viruses. Anyone say they've been the victim of a cyber attack and why do you think are some of the more common reasons that this is happening? You know, it doesn't matter who you are. You know, we've seen the most intelligent people, some people that I highly respect and I know they're very smart. They just get caught in an awkward moment where they fall for something that isn't real. You know, they get a call on the phone uh, that says, you know, there's something wrong with their computer. They're, you know, the caller is from Microsoft. They want to hop on the computer and protect them and they make it seem real. The customer gets them on the computer, gets them on their computer remotely and allows them to access their stuff. Um, I've seen several hours into it, the customers will call us and they'll say, hey, we let them on for hours and they were on our computer for hours and it doesn't seem like they did anything. And can you take a look at our computer to see if we were hacked or, or they stole our information? And that's scary because once they have access to your computer, they have access to anything on it, bank yes. accounts, yeah. social security yes. numbers. Uh, and, and as you said, it really can happen to anyone. I mean, we've talked to doctors, teachers. If you don't think it can happen to you, you're just more likely to become the victim of a cyber attack. Yeah, it's it's a uh, it's a very scary thing. You know, people will say uh, I've had customers come in and said um, they've received notification from some authority that said they've had pornography or some illegal content on their phone. And I asked the customer, you know, do you have something like that on your phone? They're like, no. And I said, well, why would you want to pay somebody to get something that you know is not on your mm -hmm. phone? And why, you know, in thinking about it afterward, they see the rationale and they see, you know, why they shouldn't be doing it. But in the minute, they get so afraid that something's going to happen to them or some, you know, some government agency or some um, 
somebody's going to come and arrest them or something for something they have on their phone because they don't think they did anything, but who knows? And okay. there's that pressure to, to, to act, right? Oh. And that's when you got to take a step back and pause and talk to someone you trust, it, like yourself. It's, it's crazy. I know a woman who came in uh, a couple weeks ago and she actually went to a Bitcoin ATM and, she, and deposited money in the Bitcoin ATM to pay somebody to fix her computer remotely. Scary. And that Bitcoin, I mean, once it's gone, it's gone. It's she, gone. It's, it's like cash. anything else. The reason why, you know, you, you know, customers will talk to people on Instagram because people need, uh, you know, we're people. We like to talk to each other. You know, we like when people take interest in us. And sometimes the Internet is good for that and bad for that because people will take interest in you and start a conversation with you, find out a lot of information from you that you don't think is important. They'll social engineer a way into your life. And then before you know it, they're asking you to go to Walgreens and buy Apple gift cards, or they're asking you to go and buy, to Walmart and buy Walmart gift cards. And they have some dire need that they need your help and, you know, scratch off the cards, take a picture, text it to them so that they have it. And then they either disappear or they continue on the extortion for a long time. Cybersecurity isn't only about adding layers of security technology. It starts really with understanding about managing your risk, your cybersecurity risk. What are the risks? The risks are incredible because you, you, you stay, a lot of people keep their whole lives on their phones or they keep their whole lives on their computers and all that information becomes digitally accessible. You know, people have to do what they can to mitigate the risk by um, not allowing access to their computer to people by thinking before they download a new app, is it a trustworthy app? You know, by thinking that if they get around the security to get some app that they think they're getting a deal on or getting something for free because they're getting around it, how is that going to open them up? You know, let's talk about public Wi-Fi because quite a bit of personal information is already shared on the internet by our cell phones, our laptops, tablets, anything when we're connected to public Wi-Fi. So while these access points obviously make it easier to shop and bank and make travel arrangements, keep in touch with the family, they also leave us more vulnerable, correct? Yes. When you're on public Wi-Fi, you don't know who's on the Wi-Fi with you. Um, it would it would scare you like uh, like every day I'm I'm become more afraid of what's going on because how open everything is. You could sit inside of McDonald's, go on the Wi-Fi, and if they don't have what's called, if they don't have good Wi-Fi hygiene and they don't have isolation turned on, which means that y your connection to the Wi-Fi is secure, uh, most places don't have that going on. Your phone can t talk to another phone that's on the network, or your computer can talk to another computer that's on the network. And you could be eating lunch, surfing the web on your computer, while somebody in another booth is sitting on the web hacking into your computer. Wow, that's so scary. Let's go over some tips to stay cyber safe. I'm gonna go through some of these tips and you can talk about them. One, share with care. This, this has to do with the posts that you put on social media, which last a long time. So yes. you really need to consider who you're sharing that information with, right? Yes, yeah, and what you say stays on the internet forever, whether you want it to or not. You know, there's a lot of internet archive sites uh, for good and bad, you know, there's a, a historical internet website out there that you can actually go look at past websites. And I'm going talking about as far back as 2000, 1999. Wow. And actually look and see what the web looked like then. Back in the AOL days. Yes, it's crazy. <laughs> so manage privacy settings is the next, next tip. Check the privacy and security settings on web services and apps and set them to your comfort level for information sharing. Yeah, I, I tend to tell people and family members, uh, Instagram, Facebook, if you really want to be safe, just share your stuff with your family and contacts that you know. Don't invite anybody into your circle that you wouldn't feel comfortable with. And, um, you know, especially be suspicious of people that wouldn't normally talk to you. And I'm talking about people that may be lonely at home and, and all of a sudden somebody that normally wouldn't pay an ounce of attention to them is all of a sudden focusing on them, trying to be their friend on the internet and sharing photos and, and things like that. And we've also seen cases where people's friends were hacked. So they think it's an old high school friend. Hey, why don't you, you know, dip your toe in cryptocurrency? I'm, I'm making a lot of money. And next thing they know, they're giving someone who hacked into their friend's account all of this, all of their life savings. Yeah, something I tell people all the time that whether it's on social media or whether it's an email from a friend or, or anything like that, verify what you do before you do it. Pick up the actual mm -hmm. phone call the person and say, hey, did you send me this? Because I can't tell you how many times I'll get a email or I'll get a, something from a customer where they're saying, is this real? And I said, well, did you call? 
to find out if it's real. And oh, we get emails from them all the time. I know, but now they're asking you to do something that they normally wouldn't ask you to do. That's good. So, uh, and they've called. This was recent as last week. Somebody was asked to do a money transfer. Um, and they called and they found out it was fraudulent mm -hmm. and they would have sent $10,000 to another business. Wow. Just wow. because. The next tip is personal info is like money. Value it. Protect it. Yeah. Um, I try not to give my social security number or any personal information out to any website uh, if I can avoid it. You know, mm -hmm. and always if you're going to go to a website. And uh, people do this all the time. They may have a Liberty Bank account or a m and Bank account or something like that. And instead of typing the actual address into the web browser, they go Google it. Mm -hmm. Now, if they Google it and they misspell it or something like that, and Google comes up with something that looks like that, they might be trapped into going into an alternate or a fake site where they go ahead and put their credentials in. And seemingly, it doesn't work, so they just don't care. But in the meantime, some hackers taken that username and password and added it to a list. And these bad actors are gotten really good at getting their websites to the top of the search list when you do Google things. So you think you would think I, I've seen this a lot with airline scams. You would think when you're trying to get a hold of this airline and you Google it, it'd be the first one that comes up, but not necessarily. Um, you know, the it's true. And the thing is, some of these hacker groups have a lot of money, so mm -hmm. they don't mind spending it on advertising. And if you look at Google lately, most of the stuff that comes up to the top is paid for advertising before you see the actual search results. Okay. Okay. That's good to know. Make your passwords long and strong. This is one of the easiest things you can do to protect yourself, isn't it? Yeah. Yeah. Um, I would, there's a couple of things you could do with passwords, long, strong, uh, punctuation characters that are not, you know, um, like exclamation marks, hashtags, things like that. Um, get a password manager, something that is safe and secure. Um, that way you can use different passwords for different websites. People get into the using one password for everything. Yeah. <laughs> and that's like having one lock on your door that opens everything in your life. Mm -hmm. that's it. Wow. Yeah. yeah. Before you know it, you know, you're using this password everywhere. Um, and don't use things that are physically associated with yourself. You may think that that's good for your memory to, mm -hmm. but people spend their time hacking people uh, socially and they'll look at their Facebook site and learn their dog's name and their cat's name and their street they live on and things like that over a period of time. And that gives them a lot of ammunition to go into uh, password hacking. So much of our info is already out there. It's just like putting pieces of puzzle together and they just need a couple more pieces and they can steal your identity. It's pretty crazy. You know, and I tell consumers too that they should lock, lock their credit reports. It's really easy to do. And uh, you, nobody's applying for credit every day. So it's really easy to unlock your credit report when you get to go and apply for a new loan or something like that. But, Does that cost money to lock your credit report? Um, you know what? Um, I belong to an Experian credit monitoring service that it does cost me money, okay. but I'm pretty sure you're allowed to pull your credit report once a year. Yeah, I have and I, and I'm pretty sure the credit companies will let you lock your report for free, okay. but I, I don't know that for sure. Okay. Okay. Uh, one thing back to the passwords is the tip I like is to use an inspirational quote or your uh, lyrics to your favorite song. Yeah, so that's not, be hard for, for someone to figure out. Right. Right. Um, let's talk about keeping tabs on apps. You've mentioned apps before. They they ask for access to your personal information, your geographical location, contact looks, phone, uh, photo album before using their services. Are those red flags, you know? Oh, well, every app's going to use a certain amount of, need a certain amount of permissions to do their function. For one, you want to use a reputable app. You want to look to see how many users are downloaded the app. You, you know, you get an app that looks like a major app like iTunes, but it only has like three three users that have downloaded or even a thousand users. You know, that's not the right app. You can click on the app and get the authentication of wh who the uh, maker of the app is and things like that. Because with Google Play and with the Apple uh, Store, they have to, when they publish that as a developer, they have to put all the inf information in there. So there is a way to look behind the scenes a little bit before you download. And also something that I like that's really good is um, the ability to just use this permission when the app is open. Mm -hmm. When they close the app, they no longer have access to that function. And updates are important. Updates a lot are, of the, they have security. Updates, updates are very important. I tell everybody just turn automatic updates on 
leave your leave your phone connected at night so that way it, you know overnight it's never impend it's never impeding you using your phone or anything like that and everything just stays up to date and the other important thing is backup because even if you have some kind of thing that happens or a hacker gets in and corrupts your data or something like that um, backup to the cloud is very cheap you know whether it's through apple or through google very cheap very automatic um, I learned my lesson when a SIM card flew out of my phone and I lost all my daughter's pictures. Oh, wow. This was a long time ago. Mm -hmm. And then I found out that I could pay a dollar to Google and have Google Cloud back up my photos, you know? Okay. So that way, if something happened to my phone, and that wasn't even malicious, that was just... An accident. You know? Um, we talked about passwords, but you should lock down your login further than that, right? Two-factor authentication. Two-factor authentication is a standard today. You know, if the website offers two-factor authentication, grab it, use it. Yes, it's a pain in the neck, but <laughs> um, part of two-factor authentication is you give you text or they, you can get an authenticator. And the authenticator is um, something that can store multiple websites. You know, you get a little code, you put the code in, and then you're off and running. Uh, some websites um, and some apps have offered biometric um, access, and that's great too. So you can just use your fingerprint and you're into whatever you happen to be in. I think American Express is like biometric. Why is two-factor authentication? For anyone out there that hasn't heard of it before, why is it so important? Why is it better than just putting in a password? Well, because you put in a password and then two-factor is a way of authenticating that it's actually you because you can only access the two fact the second factor. You're only going to get that text message or you're only going to supply that authentication from your authenticator. So it's multi-level password entry. Okay. Don't click on unfamiliar links. I feel like this goes without saying, but unfortunately it happens all the time. Emails that look like they're coming from a real company have links. People click on them and it, it leads to bad things. You got to be very careful. When you look at emails, it's so common to just buzz through your emails, but you really got to open them and look at who they're from. And they may say from apple.com, but in parentheses next to it, it says from gmail.com or something like that because um, Outlook and even, even Apple Mail will show you that information, but people don't usually look at it. They'll just look at it and see, oh, it's from Apple. It must be good. Hover over that link before clicking on it to see where it's really going to take you because it could infect your computer, could infect a whole business. Yep. And, they, and there are um, prophylactic programs like Malwarebytes has a browser guard, and there are a couple different companies out there that have browser guards that will help you not go to a bad website. Okay. And then lastly, pay attention to internet connected devices like smart thermostats, voice control systems, your cars, everything seems to be connected to the internet today. What kind of trouble can we get into? Um, there have been problems like with, um, I know with doorbells and uh, thermostats and things like that, where you've seen that uh, there have been cases of hacks and so forth. Uh, you know, have a good router in your house or firewall, make sure it's turned on. If you have uh, Comcast or you have Frontier, they offer some uh, security services that are, that in most cases are free. You just have to turn them on, okay. but it'll it'll prevent you. My uh, my own um, Xfinity protection app that I have at home tells me that my Dish Network box is being hacked all the time. It's just so it's erroneous. It's not real. I checked oh. it out, but it's it shows me that the app's actually looking for something from. Uh, something from the outside trying to get in. Oh, wow. Yeah. Almost too good to be, you know. It's crazy. It's too good. Uh, okay, let's switch gears and talk about business. You say every business needs baseline security. What does that mean? You need to make sure that you are you have baseline security. You need to make sure you're doing your Windows updates. You need to make sure that you have an antivirus. Um, as liability and things like that have gone up and as insurance companies have paid out, businesses are, are starting to be required to have an, an EDR product, which is a, like a super antivirus. You know, it's an endpoint detection and response is what it means. And basically it gives you a way to prevent ransomware from happening. And if it does happen, it gives you some things you could do to possibly revert it. Uh, or you get into MDR, which is managed detection and response, which is the same thing, except for someone looking and helping you um, looking to uh, find something and act on it, or if something happens to remediate it. Uh, but security is really like um, like an old school parfait. You got to make layers, and you got to make it really hard. And locks keep honest people out. Old saying, true, because um, if you make it really hard, there's lots of people that are a lot easier to get into that aren't making it hard. 
So I have to think that the hacker is going to say, hey, let me go spend my time on something that's going to yield me fast results rather than trying to get into something like that. How important is it for businesses to educate their employees about cybersecurity and what should those conversations look like? It can be anything, you know, You they can have regular meetings, but I find really effective is there's a company called Know Before. Um, there's actually a few companies out there that do it that offer a systematic training program that doesn't really involve the company. They send out emails to try to uh, score your employees mm -hmm. to see how well they do with a fraudulent email, how well they do with a, a targeted scam. But oh, these wouldn't be causing actual damage and they give... Uh, they give the directors, managers, owners insight into the um, how their employees are handling uh, cybersecurity, and give them training on how to how to get better at it. Okay, because we hear so much about business email compromise. You know, it's not just those at the top, but it's everyone below them that might be trying to please their boss and answering these these requests to go buy gift cards or wire money when really it's just a scammer or a hacker. A, pay, a, common, a common one is a payroll person who gets a request for an employee who wants to change their bank to deposit their paycheck in. And they just send an email saying, you know, hey, this is Joe, I just want to change my account number. And it works a lot. Mm, it's scary. I get data breach notices from businesses multiple times a year. Those, you know, they come in the mail, we've had a breach. It's also important for companies to build the public's trust in their cybersecurity standards, but how do they do that when it just appears that the cyber criminals are always a step ahead? They are. Lock your credit report. <laughs> you know, that, that goes back to that goes back to you have to lock the doors and, and limit access to your information. Lock your credit reports. If you think something's going on with your credit cards, a lot of these credit card apps will allow you to lock your credit cards and it's as easy as just moving the button. So you know, I'm not saying lock your credit card in between every purchase. It might come down to that eventually. But the thing is, um, you know, there are a lot of things you can do to prevent your stuff. Buy a shredder, even at home, shred your stuff. I shred everything that I get because I don't want somebody going through my trash uh, and piecing pieces of my life together to use against me or to steal things from me. Okay. Um, do things like make sure that, you know, Large transactions and stuff like that, if you can do them in person at the bank or in person at the town hall, are really good. I'm not a big fan of uh, of everything that's becoming digitized that's allowing hackers to, to get in and get something from a town or get something from the state. So here's an interesting stat. 68% of global organizations have experienced at least one cyber attack. And this year, the cost of cyber crimes is forecasted to reach 9.5% trillion dollars with small businesses being a popular target. So businesses not only need to put in measures to avoid cyber attacks, but they also have to have a plan in place in case it happens. What should that plan look like? Well, that's a continuity plan. And that's something that, you know, and like I said, in the past couple of years, insurance companies and, and companies getting hit for big amounts of money, it's not only what they lose at that one particular moment, it's how long it takes them to get back in business. Mm -hmm. Because without a continuity plan and without a strategy and without backing up, it can take you a long time to put your business back together. You know, so you should have a comprehensive backup plan. You should have backup that doesn't sit just inside your building that you can access, even if it's not a hack, it's an act of, act of God and you have a fire and the place burns down that you can still um, conduct business and do things as quickly as possible. Um, I forget what the statistic is, but it's high about the amount of businesses that fail after a cyber attack because they can't recover. They lost their accounts receivable, they lost their accounts payable, they, they just can't function. Or they lose the proprietary information they have that they, they need on a daily basis. The common thing customers tell me all the time is, oh, we don't really do much, but if you take their computer away from them for a day, you find out how much they really do. Time is money. Some trending cybersecurity threats are business email compromise, which we already talked about with the payroll example, malware and ransomware threats, cybercrime cash out processes with cryptocurrencies, that's a mouthful, and crime as a service. What is a malware or ransomware threat that you often see targeting businesses? It could be anything. You can go to a website by accident, click on a link. You can open an email, click on a link. Uh, you know, email filtering is also a good thing to have for a company. It's part of the layered approach is to have uh, an email security company who's pre-scanning emails for you 
and looking for things uh, they call it DSP, where they're actually looking for information leaving your company that might be account numbers, credit card numbers, and things like that. And the mail companies can stop that before it leaves the network. Okay. Cyber crime crash out processes with cryptocurrencies. Have you heard of that before? Um, I'm, I'm imagining that's sort of like the woman that I told you that went down. Not that term uh -huh. specifically, but you know, there are a lot of people that are uh, trying to get people to invest in, in not just Bitcoin, but other cryptocurrencies and join their trading groups and things like that. Uh, but I haven't heard that term specifically. Okay, and crime as a service. Oh yeah, there's a lot of hacking groups that are like for hire out there. Really? Yeah. Oh um, you know, because you're not talking about just the U.S. The world is connected now and connected at high speed. So you have hacking groups that are available just like countries can hire mercenaries. Hmm. Hmm. What is the most important tool businesses need to equip themselves to combat these threats? Well, no matter how big your business is, because, the, uh, you know, we've seen businesses that are small get crippled and we've seen large businesses that get crippled and we've seen Fortune 500 companies get crippled. Uh, like just a few months ago with the CrowdStrike um, mm. event that cost you know, Delta Airlines a billion dollars. You know what? The economies to scale. If you put down if you put down a local lawyer's office, you know, for a month, that's going to that's going to put that local lawyer in a, in a real pickle. So I know that protecting data is crucial. What are the best ways for businesses to protect their data? Backup. Easy. Just do it. Well, because no matter what, just like a disease in a body, when a virus comes out, there's always victim one, mm. you know, you're going to get by the security, you're going to get by what they have in place, or they're not going to have anything in place. But if you have a backup, at least you have something that's not infected that you can get back up and running in a reasonable amount of time. And backup can be cheap. You know, it doesn't have to be expensive. Um, there are a lot of backups out there. Um, Kaseya makes a backup that is a lot more expensive for a business, but is actually a continuity plan where, you know, you're backing up to a device let's say your server goes down for whatever reason, ransomware, whatever, you can actually go back to the last backup and run it on the device so that you can keep your business running while you figure out how to fix it. Rich, you have been so helpful today and I hope everyone takes these tips and really utilizes them. Before we go, you know, you've been accredited with BBB for 23 years, most of the length of your, your business. Um, why did you seek accreditation way back when and what do you hope it says to your customers? Well, you know, you know, I think uh, the funny thing is it came from an electrician. And uh, I used to hang out with a lot of older people in business who would always tell me how to do things and, and get me some experience I didn't have. And he said that the BBB was a great thing for him because it enabled customers to check with the BBB about the status of his business and reviews and complaints and things like that. And it held him to a higher standard because he knew that you know customers would be talking to the bbb so it just helped them to a higher standard i thought it was a natural fit you know that we joined the bbb we hold ourselves to a higher standard and i think it also helped um if there is a problem with the bbb i've never had to do it but i've always liked the mediation offering that if there was a big problem with the customer or something like that the bbb could step in and help mediate that so the customer leaves good and the business leaves good well, we thank you for being accredited and thank you for the wealth of knowledge that you've shared today. We really appreciate it. Enterprise Computer out of Clinton, a great resource for people out there. So thank you. Thank you. And we thank you for joining us today. You know, even though it is Cybersecurity Awareness Month, these are tips that we should be using every single day. Every day we should be cyber aware. Thanks again for joining us and we'll see you next time. The Saybrook Fish House in Canton has been serving fresh seafood, chicken, and prime steaks for 40 years. Experience one of our three unique dining room settings, two with fireplaces, or relax in our cozy pub with a craft beer, wine by the glass, or specialty cocktail while enjoying a meal from our new Lighter Fair pub menu. Serving lunch and dinner Tuesday through Sunday, reservations accepted for parties of 2 to 42, gift cards always available. The Saybrook Fish House, nestled at the crossroads of routes 44, 202, and 179 in Canton.